Why y'all there? It's Dan. I want to welcome everyone to my home in the sticks. Lord of mercy, wherever you are at in the world. Hope you're having a show enough good start to a new week and everything's good with you. But over here in East Central Mississippi, it's been raining and it's probably going to be raining here in a second. Before we get started on today's video, I'm always going to say that if you're new to the channel, I'm going to welcome you. And if you return and just see what old Dan's got going on over her, I show enough thank you for coming back. But what I want to share with you and y'all today is Lord of Mercy. I'm going to show you how to clean range brass to get it ready to be hand loaded or reloaded. So give me a second and that's what we fit in the dues. <laughs> So the process that I use is a lengthy one and I don't think that I'm going to be able to share everything that I want to share with you in about seven to eight minutes. So this may be a long video. So I'm just warning you. Here is some range brass that I picked up and I had, I found, I got a major score on some range brass and this is, you probably won't be able to see it. But this is Lake City Brass or LC Brass. This is 223 Brass. Now this is the stuff I picked, again, I picked up on a range and it is stupid, nasty, dirty. It's got dirt all over it and yeah, it's just some nasty stuff. Now what you don't want to do or what I don't do, you shouldn't run any type of brass that's really dirty through uh, your uh, resizing and depriming die. Uh, mainly because you will probably mar up the inside of your die, maybe, or worst case scenario, you get a piece of brass stuck in a die because it was dirty. So what I do is uh, when I get range brass and it's dirty, I count it out in the amount of pieces that I want to mess with uh, in this reloading session. And this is probably about 275 pieces. I'll tell you why. Uh, the number is 275 here in a second. But all I do is I take this over to the sink and I fill this up with, uh, fill this container up with water and I slosh these things around trying to knock off some of the dirt that's on the outside as well as the inside. I spin it around in this media separator right here. I throw it into uh, my dryer and this is a lime and cyclone. Throw it in there, dry that brass off real good. And this is what I end up right here. And this is cleaned, dirty range brass, if you will. Uh, you see how funky it looks. But there's no dirt on the outside and hardly any dirt on the inside. And this is stuff that I've already uh, deprimed. And we'll get into that here in a second. Sure, somebody's going to say, Dan, why don't you just uh, throw that brass in your tumbler and just go on and get it clean and do what you're doing now. I do, and the reason why I don't is you can clean this brass if you want to, get it all nice and shiny on the outside and somewhat on the inside, but you still have a primer left in this casing. So you'll have a clean case on the outside, clean case on the inside, and a dirty primer pocket. So the method that I use is I deprime everything first, and then I throw it in the tumbler, clean it where I get a shiny case on the outside, on the inside, and I get a clean primer pocket. Another thing I'm going to say is, do you have to get your brass super shiny, squeaky clean? No, you do not. The weapon system that you are shooting this brass in is not going to know whether or not that brass is clean or dull. So it really doesn't matter. So it is a personal preference to do it. Uh, the way that I do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, the equipment that I use to deprime my brass and why I do it this way. So let's go check that out. All right. So what we have here is an RCBS resizing, resizing and depriming die. You'll see that there is a little piece of metal sticking out of there. That is a depriming rod. This is what you use to resize brass and deprime it at the same time. What I use is something called a universal depriming die. Let's look at that. All right, what we have here is a die that is only made uh, to do one thing, and that is deprime casings. So here is the die body. 
That's the inside of the die body. An interesting thing to note is the inside diameter of this die body. You see how wide it is as compared to the RCBS die that is smaller in inside diameter. This reworks brass and resizes it back to SAMI spec where this die does not. The only thing that this does is knock the primer out of the casing that you're depriming. Hence the name universal decapping die. So let's look at the parts to this uh, depriming die. Here's your depriming rod and this is a big uh, beefy one. It's hard to break this thing I'm here to tell you. But you can, uh, it's possible to break these things if you're not careful. It's got a spring and a cap. The spring sits on the cap. The rod will go into the inside of the die body and there's a small hole. Hopefully you can see it maybe. But there's a small hole. Sits down in there, protrudes out the bottom and the spring and cap go right on top of it. And this is, the spring's pretty beefy or it's stout. So we're going to tighten that up and we're going to crank down on it and hand type it. That's the internals of a universal depriming die. So let's get this die set up on the press and then we will commence to depriming a few uh, 223 cases so I can show you how the die works and what it does and then we're going to rock on to the next step. So the thing is that we're going to need obviously a press. This is a Redding T7 turret press. We're going to need a shell holder that uh, corresponds to the case that you are uh, working with and this is a RCBS number 10. And this is for uh, 223 and quite a few other cases, but you're gonna need one of those. And of course, you're gonna need your die. All right, so how this works, we're gonna screw the die down into your press. We're gonna raise our ram up, and we want the die to come into contact with the shell holder. So we're just gonna keep screwing that die down until it touches the shell holder, which it has. And we're going to back this die out about a quarter of a turn. And then we're going to set our lock ring. What we need to do now is tighten down this lock ring so it doesn't move. A couple of turns to lock it on in. Good to go. We're going to rotate our press around to its original position. And then we're going to commence to depriming this brass right here. Let's set our piece of brass in the shell holder. And we're going to run this ram up. And we're going to knock that primer out. That's what a spent primer looks like. That's the firing side where the pin hits it. And that is the cup side. Somebody may ask, Dan, I've seen you depriming uh, that brass, but where do the, pri the spent primers go? Well, on this particular press, there's a tube, a plastic tube, that mates to which is a silver piece. And when you deprime a piece of brass, it falls into this channel right here, falls down into the ram, and then gets collected in this tube right here. Okay, Dan, you done deprimed all of that brass. And here it is, 275 pieces of it or so. What we're gonna do next? We are going to wet tumble our brass to get it cleaned on the inside, the outside, as well as the primer pocket. The machine that I use to do that is an Extreme Rebel 17. And this is a stainless steel um, media tumbler. Dana, what? There are two different methods of cleaning brass, probably three really, of cleaning brass. You have a vibratory tumbler that uses media such as corn cob, or walnut media, if I'm not mistaken, or a mixture of both. You also have something called an ultrasonic cleaner, and you also have a wet tumbling method, and that's the method that I use. I use stainless steel media uh, with water and a little detergent to clean my brass. So let's take a look at this tumbler. Again, this is the Extreme Tumbler, and this is the Rebel 17 model. The things that I like about it are it has adjust this tumbler has adjustable feet right here. These things spin in and out to get this base level. The idler shaft and the drive shaft are stainless steel. They're riding on bearings. 
that are captured by U-clips. Very, very nice. These shafts are rubber coated and the motor is extremely stout. Uh, air cooled motor. And this is uh, your pulley system right here. This is the drum itself. This thing is welded all the way around and it has a rubber liner. And it's all powder coated. That's what I really, really like as well. Okay, Dan. Okay, wet tumbling. What, why not just use a vibratory tumbler? And yeah, again, it's a matter of preference. I've used uh, both methods of cleaning brass and I just happen to like uh, tum the wet tumbling method. Vibratory, uh, cleaning your brass with a vibratory tumbler, it's probably gonna be a little bit cheaper, maybe, uh, to get brass clean. The, the things that I don't like about the vibratory tumblers are, is the uh, amount of dust that the media throws off when you are tumbling brass, using that type of, uh, that method of tumbling brass or cleaning brass. Uh, as the, the tumbling media degrades, the more dust that it's gonna throw off. The cons to wet tumbling, not very many that I know of, other than the fact that it is expensive up front to get into. This setup, uh, the tumbler, the base, and five pounds of media will probably run you uh, 300 and maybe 50 bucks uh, shipped through Amazon. Let's get some brass in this tumbler. We'll talk about the tumbler and its limitations because yeah, it does have some limitations. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna dump in our stainless steel media. This is the media that I use, stainless steel media that I use. Let's go ahead and dump our brass in. We're gonna fill this drum up to about one inch from the top. All right, we got our water to about one inch to the top of the drum. So we're gonna add about two tablespoons of Dawn dishwashing liquid. I think it calls for an eighth teaspoon of lemon shine or something like that. So I'm just gonna throw in something like that. We're gonna put on our gasket on top of the drum, put our lid on top of the gasket, and we're gonna commence to screwing this guy down or tightening this lid down. So of course, we wanna try to get it as even as we possibly can. I just start in opposite directions and then I go around each one and just hit it again. Okay, Dan, you said something about limitations when it comes to this Rebel 17 tumbler. Yes, it has some limitations. It is a 17 pound uh, media tumbler. So by the time you add five pounds of stainless steel media, and then you add the water to where it's about one inch to the top of the drum, you only have about four pounds left that you can play around with. Remember, few minutes ago I talked about the brass 275 to 300 uh, pieces of 223 brass in this uh, in this setup now if you want to clean larger caliber casings like the 338 Lapua things of that nature yes your quantity is going to get smaller because they're bigger and they weigh more but fire application and right now what I'm doing right now which is 223 about three about two two about 275 to 300 pieces is gonna be four pounds, and that's what I can clean in this guy right here. So let's get this thing uh, onto this base and get to cleaning. All right, we're gonna set this drum onto the base, and the newer Rebel 17s have a on and off switch or a toggle switch. So we're gonna turn it on. We're gonna let this guy tumble. So I'm gonna let this brass tumble for about three and a half hours and then I'll turn the camera back on and we'll see what we ended up with. So we've been tumbling for about three and a half hours. We're fixing to turn this thing off and see what we ended up with. So this is what the brass looked like before we tumbled it. All right, we're 
going to carefully try to pour this water out. See how dirty that water is? We don't want to lose any stainless steel pins if we can. If we can, we want to try to hold on to them. Take a look at that brass. You'll see it a little bit better once I get it all the way out. So I dumped the brass out of this, out of the drum into this RCBS media separator. And how this works is you lock it down and you put the, the other half on top of it and you spin this guy. And that separates the media, the stainless steel media from the case, or it should anyway. Here's what the media separator separated. We got some dirty water in there. Here's our stainless steel pins. But this is the final outcome. This is the clean 223 brass that we worked on today. Primer pockets are nice and clean. The inside, even though you can't see it, I guarantee you it's pretty clean. The final step is we need to take these uh, out of the separator and we're going to load them up into this lime and cyclone dryer, case dryer, and we're going to get them dried up. Lime and brass dryer loaded up. Probably going to take about maybe three trays. What you don't want to do is you don't want any of the brass sitting on top of each other or anything like that. You want them spaced out so they can get, get the heat put to them evenly. Put our lid on, and we're going to set our timer for about three hours of dry time just to make sure that they're dry. And we're going to let them go just like that. In about three hours, we're going to end up with some nice dry Lake City brass that we can have on hand to reload or trade or do whatever, what, do whatever we want to do with it. But this is the pinnacle of brass. If you could find it, Lake City brass, it is some good brass. It is consistent all the way around. And whenever I find it, or whenever I get the chance to pick it up, I'm picking it up. Well, all right, that's what I wanted to share with you and y'all today. Lord of mercy, a long, yes, long, comprehensive video on how old Dan cleans his brass over here at the home in the sticks to get it ready to start hand loading whatever it is I'm gonna be hand loading, be it uh, 223 or 300 blackout. And I also gave you a look at the tools that I use to accomplish that mission. So again, I hope everybody's having a show enough, good start to a new week, and I hope you stay safe amid this crisis that we still have going on. If y'all like this video, go and give it a thumbs up, they help. If you haven't subscribed to the Home of Six channel, Lord of Mercy. Y'all need to come on over and give old Dan a look, because I'm always doing stuff like cleaning brass. With that being said, you know what's coming. Dan reference show enough, always gon' say it. Don't let nobody do your shine. And I mean nobody, you sure enough to get your shine on, clean some brass whenever you get a chance. And Dan will see you and y'all in the next video.